Okay, so just to let you know what you're in for in this video, we're going to learn that there are invisible individuals out here watching us. Some of them for good and some of them for bad. We will learn how these malicious spirits influence us through our minds, our emotions and our feelings, our wills and make us yield into the servants, into the slaves and into the instruments that they wish us to be. There are billions, trillions, maybe even quadrillions of these beings, disturbed spirits that are waging war against humanity, turning us into their slaves and trying to drag us into the dark areas where they exist. So stick around, it's going to be an interesting class. Twenty-seven. This era is different from the first and second. Today you live in chaos of unchained elements, both visible and invisible. Woe to he who is not watchful, for he shall succumb, even he who is prepared shall have to struggle. Talking about these visible and invisible spirits. So we're going to learn here that there are uh, invisible spirits around us, huh? Yeah, um, I don't know if it says it in 1 through 26 or after this uh, section, but it says that there are thousands of eyes watching us, that there are more um, invisible spirits in the world than there are visible uh, people walking around. We're going to have to learn how to deal with these visible and invisible elements. Yeah. yeah. 28 says, thousands of invisible eyes are watching you, some to ambush you on the road and others to protect you. Now, this is a pretty spooky chapter, huh? Yeah, spooky. Mm -hmm. Look right here. It said that we have thousands of invisible eyes watching us. Yeah, and then it says some to ambush you. And when we think of the word ambush, we think of people that's waiting behind bushes, waiting to do a surprise attack on you. Yeah. Yeah, so it says some are there to... Uh, ambush you on your road and the road that it's talking about is the road to the Father uh, the road of righteousness and others uh, which ones we're grateful for are the one our others are there to protect you talking about the guardian angels mm-hmm yeah, all right well, let's look at 29 the great <laughs> legions of the third spirits taking advantage of the ignorance of humanity and their insensibility and lack of spiritual vision make war on them and men have not prepared their weapons of love for defense against the attacks so that in this struggle they appear to be defenseless see now this is why we want to do this is because as a humanity we are ignorant of the fact that these legions of disturbed spirits are around us watching us and even ambushing us along the path yeah, making war on us, causing us to do things, as I said before, uh, causing us to do things, putting little thoughts in our head because some kind of way they can connect with your spirit and have you thinking certain things that you didn't want to think. To have bad thoughts. And we have, we're ignorant of it. So this will actually be going on in our day-to-day -day lives, even when we're in our house. And we're sitting there, you know, minding our own self business, and then we start to have evil thoughts against our neighbors and friends and even family members out of the blue. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think women are prone to it more so than men because we're constantly having these thoughts, you know, not only about others, but about ourselves. And so to know. You know, to no longer be ignorant that there, there are spirits that are causing you to think this way, I think is very helpful. One of the things that, you know, we had a spell on that you said is how they're interacting with our thoughts, these, mm -hmm. these spirits. They may not necessarily be interacting with us physically. I don't think they are interacting with us physically. Well, there are those that can come in and possess your body and make it, try to make it their own. Yeah, we but, read about um, that in this section a little later on. But that's very rare. Yeah, but what I mean is they can't open doors. They can't. Oh, right. Yeah, they can't uh, knock stuff over. They can't turn on a light switch or actually harm you in any kind of physical way. They only really interact with our minds and our thinking and our thought patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and some, and that is much worse. 
much worse because our thoughts are deeds. Yes. And yes. we are held accountable for our thoughts and our thoughts cause us to act. They cause us to act. Yeah, you're right. And so, you know, interacting with our thoughts is very powerful. Number 30. It is necessary that my spiritual doctrine come to you to teach you how to prepare yourselves to emerge victorious from the conflict. Yeah, because we are entering the third era. And one of the significant parts about the third era is that the spiritual valley is descending upon man, meaning it's coming closer to where we live. And so it's not just so material anymore. We actually have a lot of spiritual forces that are starting to have an effect on humans and it's going to get a lot more severe as we you know go through this change that we're all expecting yeah well back up on 29 i think one of the things that we missed um where it talks about the weapon that we have in this defense against them is love yeah and i think that's very important so how do, so how do we do this though so are we saying that we have to love these disturbed spirits that are around us no when what it's saying is that well you you do have to uh pray for them I do. I pray that they will find a way out, <laughs> find a way off this rocket, find a way to leave me alone. Yeah, because most of them want, well, some of them want our, our, our law spirits, and that's another um, um, chapter. That think, might yeah. be in this chapter, talking about how some of them are trapped down here yeah, and, mm -hmm. and such. But what we have to do is when these thoughts do come to your, come to your mind, um, that you have to overpower it with love. You know, I'm sitting here thinking bad about someone. Well, you have to will yourself to overpower that bad thought uh, with love before it does become a bad deed. Right. All right, so that's extremely important. All right, let's jump back down here to 30. We got everything out of verse 30? Yeah, it's just talking about how we have to prepare ourselves. Well, it's talking about, yeah, and it's talking about this spiritual doctrine. And again, this is the third testament of the Bible. And this is a lot of what we learn in the third testament is about the spiritual doctrine. And so this spiritual doctrine is going to help us to, what did it say, emerge victorious from the conflict. Mm -hmm. Because what do, what do you like to say a lot of times is that the, the evil in the world is more dominant over the good. Yes, it is. And that includes the spirit world too, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go on to 31. 31. From that invisible world that palpitates and vibrates in your own world emerges influences that touch men, whether in their minds, their emotions, or their will, making them into submissive slaves servants, instruments, and victims. Everywhere spiritual manifestations are surfacing and yet the world continues without wishing to realize what it is that surrounds their spirits. Alright, now that's a mouthful. Yeah, here it's talking about how as we were saying before the spirits come in and they touch your mind, touch your thoughts, touch your emotions, your feelings as we say, and make you their servant, make you their slave, make you do what they want you to do, make you an instrument that they can use how they want to use. Now remember that we're talking about malicious spirits, we're not talking about the ones that are good, we're talking about the ones that are bad, the ones that are trying to um, have you do their evil will. Yeah, we read that in a, in a few more verses down, but I, I, let's look very closely at this part. It says, it touches men, whether their mind, emotions, or their will. So that's that's where they are affecting us at. Mm -hmm. Our minds or our thoughts and what we're thinking. Uh, maybe even on our sanity, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then our emotions, how mm -hmm. we're feeling. Yeah. Maybe they're making us depressed or angry or uh, selfish or um, doubtful. doubtful or you know even have hate in our heart and then they're also and, and there's a lot more emotions that they can touch but they're also touching our will mm -hmm. and right so maybe that's making us be disobedient or uh, making us uh, take on the forbidden fruit maybe when right. you think about free will mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. making them making us 
uh, victims. And they're using these th three different elements, making us into submissive servants, slaves, and instruments, as well as victims. Yeah, that, that is very important to know how you're being used, your mind, your emotions, your feelings, and your will. So once you see these things changing, you know, or, or you start feeling a certain way or you start thinking a certain way, you know, that you normally wouldn't, um, you know, it, it's, it's these spirits that are making you do these things. Thousands of eyes that are wa watching us with a lot of them um, working to sabotage us. Um, down here, it says that everywhere spiritual manifestations are surfacing, uh, and yet the world continues without wishing to realize what it is that surrounds their spirits. So the world as a whole, we don't want to even know about what's going on here. Mm -mm. We don't want to know. And so we're ignoring it. Yes. And so they're having their way with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, so you're, and so you wonder why all of this bad stuff is happening in the world. This is why. It's because we are instruments to these disturbed spirits. Not wanting to realize what's going on. We, we are tools. Yes. 32. It is necessary to take up the battle and destroy the darkness, so that when the light shines within men, all shall rise united in true communion, and with prayer, triumph in the struggle that they begin against the forces that have for so long dominated them. Yeah, we have to fight against these spirits of darkness. Like you said, we have to recognize when our emotions, our thoughts, and or our minds, or our will is being affected by evil. Mm -hmm. which are these disturbed, disturbed spirits, and had fight against them. Yeah, and it's saying that two of the ways that we can fight against them is coming together, the true communion, true coming together, and with prayer communicating to the Father. It says, and with these two things, we can triumph in the struggle that the forces have so long dominated us with. So you have this developed relationship with the Father and our now effective prayers is how we triumph in the struggle. Mm -hmm. 33. Men and people have succumbed to the power of these influences without humanity realizing it. Strange and unknown illnesses produced by them have battered mankind and have confounded the scientists. So they're making us sick? Yeah, over in another chapter, it talks about how they will come in and uh, steal your health from you. But we do know that they do, these spirits do call you, cause illness. I mean, think of, what do you think depression and, yeah, and, that will be and caused all by, that yeah. kind of stuff is come from, coming, you know, uh, uh, bipolar. And I'm, I'm not known. By psychologists, psychiatrists, and you know, I don't play one on TV or whatever. But you know something's you going on there. But you can tell that these people are working with different spirits. We have a friend of ours who's constantly talking about these spirits are in her house and, and these spirits doing used this to. to she, used yeah, to. she used to. And so you believe that those were some of these disturbed spirits that were having an effect on her. Yeah, and, and it reminds me also, um, Coach, is when Messiah was uh, down here and, you know, they would have people who would be walking around naked and, and, and yeah. lunatic and he, would, he wouldn't go to that person in the flesh. He would actually go to that spirit. And he will say, come out of that person. Yeah, talk to the so, spirit. So it has something to and, do with that. And we have that same power now as his disciples. So you think you can cast out a spirit? I've done it. Well, me scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go over. 34. How much discord, how much confusion and pain mankind has brought upon itself? The lack of prayer... A morality and spirituality has attracted impure and disturbed spirits. What can one hope for from those who have departed without light or preparation? Yeah, so we are, this is telling us how we are attracting these disturbed spirits around us. Because of lack of prayer. Not only does the majority of humanity not know to pray at all even the ones who do attempt to use prayer aren't familiar with 
proper prayer techniques and they're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lack of morality, no morals. Or the obedience to the laws that we talked about earlier, the laws given by Moses. We aren't following those laws. We aren't obedient to those laws. And, and many of those laws are centered around morality, how we treat each other, how we treat ourselves, and our relationship with the Father. And, of course, the lack of spirituality. Which most of us don't even know we have. Or won't. We don't, yeah, we don't, but well, we don't even, you're right, we don't even want spirituality because it's opposite of our materialism. 35. Well, before we go to 35, it's saying right here, departed without light or preparation. It's talking about people who have died. Uh, when it says departed, and it says they're departed without light, meaning they didn't have an understanding or preparation they wasn't obedient to the law so it says what can one hope for from those who have departed without light and a preparation those are the disturbed spirits that he's talking about right there mm -hmm. and I'm going to say what kind of expectations do you have for those who have departed who does not have light or they weren't prepared for and so all, they, all their chances are is to become disturbed spirits mm -hmm. and now try to corrupt the rest of us mm -hmm. mm. yeah. 35. There are those who you have deceived and oppressed, whom you have confused and humiliated. They can send you only confusion and darkness, exercise only vengeance, and come to you only to make claims against you. Okay, now, this is kind of spooky stuff. Now, we're already talking about people who have died without light or preparation. Mm -hmm. But now it's talking about our relationship with these individuals that has gone on, said we've deceived them, we've oppressed them, we have have confused and humili humiliated them. Are these the ones now who are coming back to take vengeance on us? Is that what it's saying? Yeah, I believe that there are those. Now, I don't know if they're just the only ones. I'm sure that there are some others, but they are, they are definitely coming back to... Um, make claims against us to make accusations against us and some being true mm, yeah so that's 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 kind of spooky to think about is we've harmed these people in their lives um and now that they've gone on now they making up this thousands of disturbed spirits that are around us affecting our minds our our free will and our feelings yeah and so they're coming back to what get you so so they're haunting us it sounds like yeah that's what i mean vengeance yeah when you some you have vengeance on some on somebody you're coming back to to get them coming back to take take it out on it yeah. take their take your anger out on them and uh it's saying that that's what they're doing so like i said this is a spooky chapter now we're talking about these evil ghosts around this and stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> 